Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you an update on our self-watering containers that we have here along our fence line. Uh, so we have 14 containers. Aaron and I split them in half. Aaron planned, picked out the uh, flowers and planted up seven of them and I did the other seven and I think we did that the very first part of May. Um, so when I go through each one of these containers to show you what they're looking like now, we'll put a couple of pictures up. One uh, right after we got done planting and then one kind of at their peak when they were looking glorious. Now we're here mid-September. They've gone through a little bit of adversity. Um, so I wanted to talk about that really quick. We deal with budworms and aphids fairly bad in our area um, and we did not stay on top of it like we should have so that's my excuse today for how they look <laughs> the way they look um, because every time they get budworms they get set back a couple of weeks and then we're out of bloom for a little while um, they're just coming back from that right now so anyway uh, let's just start in on this first one this is one that I planted so it's every other this is uh, mine and the next one will be Aaron and then so forth mine Aaron mine Aaron um, in the center here I have two can red cannas uh, which got really big. I planted three of them in here. They have suffered a little bit of burn on the ends, um, but that has just recently happened. They did look really fresh and lush for a really long time. And I don't know if it's just because they've just kind of had it um, through the season or if we're dealing with some kind of water issue. They haven't had any bug problems at all. Um, but they've had really pretty red, bright red flowers. And there were multiple times throughout the summer where they were loaded, like each one of the cannas had multiple stalks and multiple blooms. I think we have a picture of that. Um, down below, I have Superbina Scarlet Star, which is a really bright red Superbina that has kind of a white throat. So it just kind of shines. Instead of it being all red, having that white makes it pop. We have Superbell's Tangerine Punch in here and then Supertunia Honey. Now this one, is not looking super, super hot, but I have actually enjoyed it. This is the one that stretched me the most because you guys know that I don't plant red in our garden very often, but the fact that I put this one right on the very end actually I think was good because it was so bright that it really drew your attention all the way down to the end. So overall, I've been really happy with this container. So let's move on to the second one. I have my cart and my uh, pruners just in case we need to do a little bit of maintenance today. And you know, like I could fuss on that canna for a while cutting off damaged leaves, but they all pretty much have burn right now and I don't want to cut the whole thing down. So anyway, moving on to this container, this is one of Aaron's. Um, this is one of the ones he did with no centerpiece, which I think it turned out beautiful. This alyssum is a beast. This is called Blushing Princess. So it's got kind of pink, lavender, and white in each one of the blooms, but they have intermingled and just have done beautifully. There's also a Supertunia trailing rose veined. I think if I get any of these names wrong, we'll put it on the screen. There's a lot of names to remember and I'm, I can be bad at that sometimes. But I feel like the, these two plants, this, that alyssum and this Supertunia have really done well together. Super compatible. Um, there is a Supertunia royal magenta in here, but you can see that it didn't really keep up as well with the vigor of these other two. Um, so I found that kind of interesting. I mean, if nothing else, we learned a lot this year about plant compatibility and what does well uh, together. So that's always a good thing to learn. And it's something that we can incorporate, you know, in years to come. Okay, next one. So now this is one of mine. I did have a centerpiece in here. I had delightful, lively lavender dahlias. I planted three, all of which just fizzled out. I don't know if they didn't like the amount of water. These are all self-watering containers, so they all draw from the same reservoir. I just don't know if it was something like, I've got a little bit, I can see some foliage and a little bit of buds in here, but I've cut the other two out. Um, now I have that same dahlia planted in front of our chicken coop and it's done great. Um, and the dahlias, every time I plant them in containers, they always do the same thing. So I may quit doing that. They do great in the landscape, in the ground, but for me in containers, it just hasn't been working out super hot. But the other plants have taken over and it kind of looks like a container just with no centerpiece, kind of like Aaron's over there, except for not quite as glorious. Um, you can see right here, there's the proof of the budworm damage that this one's coming back from. That's what budworms do. They eat holes through the buds of your plant. And so all of the flowers start to look eaten uh, and or gone completely. Like they can decimate a plant super fast to where you'll have no blooms whatsoever. But I see tons of buds in here. And now that our weather's starting to cool down, it's gonna give these plants a little bit of a reprieve from the intense heat and wind. And they will probably flush back and give us one last really glorious show. So Supertunia trailing rose veined again here, beautiful plant. This one is so like such a good performer. 
Super Tunia Royal Velvet. I do like that depth of color, but that one is not keeping up with the vigor. Um, and that I kind of have that experience with Royal Velvet. I find I have to put that with things that want to stay a little bit smaller. That's just personal experience. I might be doing something wrong. Um, and then we've got a Superbina Large Lilac Blue, which provides just that really kind of electric lavender color in there. And it's fairly interspersed. I did lose the one on this side. So if you were to look on this side of the planter, there is a tiny bit of a gap where I have trimmed that Superbina out. Um, and these will quickly like grow in and kind of take over and fill in. So basically, I think by the end, it's just gonna look like a pot full of this Super Tunia right here, which is not a bad thing. Okay, I know a lot of you guys were really excited to see how Aaron's container did. He planted one toucan red canna in the center, one plant, and lemon coral around the base. And I think this is one that's turned out almost better than a lot of our other ones. I mean, it did take a while to get here, so it's something you have to keep in mind. You know, you can plant fewer plants in a container, but you won't have like a really bulky a statement or a show in your container for a little bit like it'll take a little bit longer than if you were to put a little bit more in each container um, but you can see like we come along here every once in a while and prune off just the spent canna blooms i'm going to check around here because i do think yeah this one needed just a little bit of maintenance here not much and then the leaves on this one look a lot better so i'm wondering if maybe it's possible that one on the end is plugged i guess you could argue too that this one is a little fresher because this one and i don't know why the one on the end did not get damaged by hail but this one did when we had that really bad hailstorm, um, and we cut it back to pretty much nothing uh, and so it had to kind of reflush you know growth and um, do its thing a little bit later in the season but i love the depth like the depth of color here is just beautiful and the way it contrasts this lemon coral sedum is just perfection. So I really think that this was a success. This was a win, Erin. Next one's mine and it's looking a little wild. So we've got Play in the Blue Salvia in the middle, which is one of my very favorite annuals. And there are pollinators. I don't know if you can see, there are pollinators all over it. And that's one of my favorite things. Like look at all the honeybees, they're just, they're everywhere, I love it. And that to me, like almost means more than the actual overall look of this container, or that's what I'd like everybody to believe. <laughs> um, so they have kind of laid down from the center here, which I could come in and I could stake them up a little bit. Like maybe in the beginning, had I put like a ring around these, they would have stayed a little bit more upright, but I honestly don't mind. I just think that they've performed really well. Um, and I haven't had to do much grooming on these at all. Um, even though they kind of laid down, they still are blooming beautifully. I mean, you can come in, like you can look at this here. This is a spent bloom that doesn't have any color left on it, but you honestly, like, you really can't tell. Like, look at that one right there. Like, you could leave that in there or not. And it wouldn't really affect the overall appearance of this plant, which is what I appreciate so much about it. We have a white knight alyssum. Look at this plant. This is one, one alyssum. It smells really good. It's beautiful. It's a beast plant. Super tunia limoncello here. I'm gonna wear the alyssum the rest of the day. And I'm really happy with how this one has kept up. Now you can see budworm on this one as well. Little holes. Um, this one did have super tunia bermuda beach in it, which I'm going to be completely honest, I'm not going to plant that one probably anymore. I've tried it two different times and it never keeps up with anything. I love the color of it. It's kind of a coral pink um, and it was beautiful in the beginning, but it just gets swallowed out by stuff and it just didn't perform like I was kind of hoping, but everything else in this can container has. So I think that Erin, you should look at it from this side. This side looks really nice. I mean, even after the budworms, you guys, this one right here had nothing on it, no color, just like maybe a week ago. Um, there's an orange rocket nephophia or red hot poker in the center, which really does, I need to do some maintenance. Actually, Aaron should be doing the maintenance on this one. This one's his pot. Uh, I think we do have pictures of this in bloom and it's been, when it blooms, it blooms for a really long time and it bloomed probably, I want to say it was either two or three times we had a really nice stand of blooms in here, but even when it's not in bloom, it's just a nice grassy texture. And I'm going to clean this up though, like some of the, uh, yellowed 
pieces here and we'll make it look a little cleaner. But we've got a Sweetheart, Sweet Caroline, Sweetheart Red, Sweet Potato Vine right there. That's just one plant and it has really grown well and it's been a really pretty look. This is actually one of my favorites out of all the containers when this one was in its prime. You can kind of see how it looked. I mean, there's Supertunia Honey, Superbell's Tangerine Punch, and then that uh, sweet potato vine. And I just thought the colors were gorgeous. It was a really like a warm kind of color combination, but a really pleasing one. Okay, so give me a few minutes. Let me clean this up. We'll see how it looks. Erin, we should trade spots right now and you should do this. They're really easy. So you just grab hold of like a little grouping of the brown things and they just come right off. Well, there's a ladybug. Stay safe, little ladybug. The ladybug is here because this pot had aphids the worst. I wonder if it still does, I'll have to check. I think that's good enough. Doesn't that look so much better? Just a little bit more fresh. I mean, I, could, I guess I could pick a little bit more out, but we're good for now, I think. Let's move on to the next one, which is hilarious. This next one looks like cousin it to me. <laughs> look at this. I didn't anticipate one lemon appeal Thumbergia growing this huge. I should have known. I've grown the tangerine slice appeal um, last year and they were beast plants. Um, but so I have a topiary form in here. There is one underneath all of this and one four inch lemon appeal Thumbergia. Um, and clearly I have done no trimming on it. I kind of wanted to see what it would do, honestly. I could have kept trimming on it, but they grow so fast too. Like you would really have to be out here. Uh, training it every couple of days to keep it under control. I also have Supertunia Royal Magenta, a Luscious Berry Blend Lantana. Might be able to see more color on this side. Yeah, this side's looking good. Look at that Royal Magenta with the lemon appeal. Isn't that pretty? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this pot is a win, even though it looks kind of funny. I mean, all the plants have done really well. Uh, hindsight, I maybe would not have had to plant the Lantana, but I like seeing it pop out here and there. I think it's a really, pretty color that blends the royal magenta with the lemon appeal because we've got both colors in that one bloom um, and then i think this side yeah the sun is over here this side gets more sun than this side this is the south side of the container this is the north side and you can clearly tell in color distribution this side is way more colorful so it's something interesting um, but anyway i was really excited to show you guys <laughs> this one i'd love to know your opinions if you would grow something like this in a container or I don't know, maybe it deserves a larger topiary form than I gave it. I'm leaving that one alone. All right, next one is Aaron's. So this recipe, I think it's called Grand Traverse. I think you saw this on the Proven Winners website and really liked it. Um, it's got a Prince Tut grass in the center, uh, which has looked very fresh. There was three of them. I think, I think, yeah, he planted three in here and there's tons of fresh, um, what are they? leaves i guess you call them leaves they're like branches with plumes on the top there are a few in here that are looking a little bit tired um so like if i come in here i can groom this kind of stuff out i'm honestly not going to spend a bunch of time on this one though um because i think well hold on i think i might be able to improve this pretty quickly we just want to get rid of the yellow minimal maintenance though i think aaron has pruned this grass one time um, is all so he came out here and just did exactly what I'm doing and just selectively pruned out some that had some yellow in it So I think that's pretty good That's pretty low on the maintenance scale. I think yeah, just having those few out makes a little bit of a difference um, And then below here. We've got sweet Caroline light green. I think a sweet potato vine and super tunia Bordeaux really gorgeous combination this poor thing had uh budworms probably the worst this whole side had no blooms on it at all like it was completely green um, you can see some of the munched on blooms right there right on the edges and then this one also had aphids and if you look close you can see like dead aphid bodies because we did come in and spray yeah right in here Whew. I don't see any, any that are alive, so that's good. So this one should make a very quick recovery. Um, now the sweet potato vine, if you don't trim this one, it will climb or crawl rather all over the ground, all over the place. 
I think I've pruned this one up maybe twice off the ground and Erin has once. Um, so that plant in particular has done really well. So this one right here, I planted three toucan yellow. You can see the brightness of their blooms over here. I need to do some grooming. Um, this one has a little bit of leaf scorch going on on it. So it's possible, actually, I did notice the other day, I had to come give this extra water. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe we're dealing with a plugged problem. Maybe it's um, the little holes in the self-watering reservoir are plugged and it's not able to drop water properly. Um, so even if you have drip or self-watering containers, you still need to pay attention to your pots, like keep an eye on them. Otherwise, you know, something can happen really quickly and then you lose your plants. And I think I caught this one in time to where it did bounce fairly well. And I've got a sweet Caroline, sweet, sweet Caroline, light green, for heaven's sakes. Uh, sweet potato vine right here, which is not as quite as uh, big as the ones in Aaron's container. And then we've got a super bean, a whiteout. This plant is awesome. There are buds all over that I'm seeing, but just a super bright color. There's Super Bell's lemon slice. Um, and I'm, I'm happy with how this is done because Super Bell's for me, um, sometimes they don't perform very well with other things because they like to dry out a little bit in between. Um, and I think that's why this one has actually survived fairly well because this pot did dry out. Um, anyway, I, I'm overall happy with this one. I don't think, yeah, I've got some to cut out here. See, that sort of thing doesn't look the best on the plant. I honestly think that a lot of these pots look the best from the other side of the fence. I look around like I pop my head over and I can see a ton of color along our neighbor's side of the fence. So this is Aaron's, another one where he didn't plant a centerpiece. There is an angel face cascade blue angelonia in here, which is just now really starting to kind of come out of its shell, I guess you could say. Like it just kind of sat for a long time and I couldn't even see it. And now I'm starting to see some branches kind of pop out on the side here. It's more of a trailer, like a I guess it does kind of fill in a little bit, but then it also trails out as opposed to a lot of other Angelonias that grow straight up. So it's got a really neat growth habit. Supertunia lovey-dovey, really pretty, unique Supertunia, and a Superbina storm burst. So again, this one has a lot of green. There isn't a ton of blooms, um, but I see buds everywhere, just like a lot of our other ones, um, rebounding from budworms. Um, and also just, you know, all the heat. I don't know if your guys' containers kind of toward this time of the year can look a little bit weary, but we are like today is 70 something. Um, and then the next 10 days it's high 60s, low 70s. And I think we're gonna have another really glorious push of blooms. So hopefully we'll get to do one more tour where they look amazing. But mid-September, I think they're looking pretty decent. This one here has got a skyrocket penicetum. This is the largest this year. The skyrocket penicetums have done the best for me than they ever have. So this one grew really, really nicely in this container. I've got two in the landscape that got, I mean, they're probably about this tall, they're huge. The reason I like this one, it's just a, a departure from the purple fountain grass in that it's the same family, but we've got a green leaf with white variegation or kind of like lighter green, yellowish white variegation. So it's just a little bit brighter, but it's interesting. I'm now seeing, look at this. I wonder if this is the cool temperatures or if we've got a little bit of reverting going on, but look at that purple, kind of pretty. So we've got a Superbina Peachy Keen. We've got a Goldilocks Creeping Jenny and Supertunia Limoncello has really done well in this container. I did have a Superbell's Tropical Sunrise in here. I can't see any of that anymore any hello yeah i don't think we have any of that super bell shining at all um so it's just something to learn for next year it's super tunia limoncello i've grown that like i think last year we did bordeaux and limoncello in these containers the limoncello never grew like this like this is just beautiful and loaded with buds look at this i mean there are just buds everywhere on this plant and the other thing about the super tunias and super bells all of these plants all of them are um, self-cleaning. You don't have to deadhead these petunias in order for them to keep blooming, which is awesome. So we're not out here doing any of that sort of maintenance. All right, 
I don't really have many words for this pot. This is one of Aaron's. <laughs> so it was beautiful. It had a, I think it's a pure white butterfly marguerite daisy in here. There's three of them, three sweet Caroline bewitched light green, I think, and three super bells uh, yellow, which the super bells don't look good at all. Yeah, those look pretty bad. In fact, like if this were my pot, I'd probably pull those out at this point and pop something new in. Um, these were like this big, maybe about this tall, full of bloom. And then, you know, this one is also, um, like it'll keep blooming even if you don't deadhead it. But I personally, and I think Aaron too, cause he came out and did this. Um, if you don't deadhead them, you can still see all of the blooms and it's just, it's not very pretty. So I think that this one does require some maintenance. So instead of painstakingly cutting off every individual bloom, Aaron just came in and sheared it back and it's full of buds. So I think we'll get another show out of it. But personally, and I don't know if Aaron would choose this one again, maybe, would you choose, he's saying no. Um, maybe, in the landscape. maybe in the landscape, yeah. I just don't feel like this one is super wonderfully suited for containers in my opinion anyway. And I know they grow differently for everybody in different climates and in different areas of, um, you know, wherever you're at, it might grow a little bit differently, or you might enjoy coming out and deadheading, or it might not bother you to see that um, and to just let the plant do its own thing. But here along our driveway, we kind of like things to look, you know, really kind of pristine at all times. And this one is not so much. So the potato vines though have done really well. Ooh, we've got a spider web on mine. Hold on. Now, where is the spider? Yep, there it is. See it? Sorry, dude, you can't live here. You can go live somewhere else. Eat up the mosquitoes. So this one, I have a clematis planted on. It's still doing well, but I cut it back because it, the foliage started to brown a little bit. It's a brother, no, cobweb, geez. Ah. Uh, brother Stefan clematis, it climbed all the way to the top and it had beautiful blue blooms on it. Um, and then it just, the foliage started to crisp up a little bit. So I decided that instead of looking at that, we would just cut it back and it's already starting to push new growth. Um, so if you look in here, you can see on these stems, new buds. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I had or, uh, always planned right from the very beginning to move this clematis out to the landscape. Um, so when we clean these out, I'll be planting it probably along our fence somewhere and letting it do, it, letting it do its thing. Does that sound right? I don't know. Uh, so we've got Dipton wine coleus right here, which is beautiful. It's just now, like it took all season to start to set bloom. And that's the wonderful thing about these color blaze coleus. First of all, they can handle a ton of sun uh, given if they're given enough water. Um, so they're really versatile, way more than I used to think they were. Uh, and they bloom very rarely or not at all. So I haven't had to come out and deadhead these at all uh, for bloom and they're just now setting bloom. So. You know, I can let them do their thing. The honeybees really like the blooms or, you know, I can come pop off the blooms, but it won't be very long before the coleus will be gone for this season. I also have diamond frost euphorbia in here, which you can see if you look into the center. So hindsight, that plant was probably unnecessary. Diamond mountain might do better. It might keep up with the coleus better. And all of these plants too might, if you were the type who liked to come and prune on your plants and keep them down a little bit and keep them, you know, all nice and, and tidy and uh, a little bit more controlled, you know, you certainly could probably get a lot of them to be much more compatible. But I like to plant things and just let them do their thing. And then I learn from that and then I implement what I learn the next year. So I know now that, you know, what's compatible and what's not. Um, so we've got Goldilocks Creeping Jenny, which did exactly what I wanted it to do. It's a dramatic spilling plant and it's come down and just looks beautiful. And that's a wonderful perennial too. So I'll be able to cut it back. I'll, I might even use it in some fall containers later on. Um, so I'll either be able to do that or cut it back and it'll just live in the greenhouse until next season. All right, the last one is pr probably the best one. So this is Aaron's. You may remember that he was just going for simplicity. In this one, I'm gonna groom off a couple of kind of uh, suffering leaves. This one has had more setbacks than the rest. So first off, we have a nice, beautiful Costa Coast Tosta in here. Um, this one was really damaged in our hailstorm to the point where I cut it back to where there was about two leaves left. Um, and it just had to be done because it was, it was shredded uh, to bits. 
So we cut that back. I noticed at that time that there were earwigs on top of the soil, so I used some bug and slug bait, um, which also takes care of the earwigs, and I baited the top of the soil. At that time, I added more slow-release fertilizer um, because these plants were really quite big, and this diamond frost wasn't, it was kind of languishing. And so I did that. Right after that happened, a huge branch out of this mulberry tree fell down. Um, it was probably, well, I can see the stump of it. It was about this big around. It was like a small tree in and of itself. It fell this way, so it didn't land directly on the pot. But when we had um, the guys come clean up that branch, there was other, you know, we had them lighten up this whole canopy so that wouldn't hopefully happen again. And a bunch of little branches fell on top of it, so it smashed it again. <laughs> um, so this poor thing has dealt with so much. Also, the self-watering is plugged, and this one had standing water in it for a little while, and we didn't know it. Uh, but overall, we've got a gorgeous looking planter. I mean, this is a wild berry hookera. Look at that. That looks better than any of my wild berries that are in the landscape. Beautiful glossy foliage. This one's not getting any overhead water, and that's probably why it looks so great. So the diamond frost euphorbia and then the hosta. Three plants, amazing container. Yes. Anyway, that's the update for today. I just thought you guys might like to see, you know, kind of kind of a season end update. I mean, like I said, we may do one more if they push another, you know, glorious stand of flowers, which they may. Uh, most of these plants, other than the coleus and the potato vines, can actually handle quite a bit of frost. Like all of our supertunias, supervenas, superbells, all of those do really well even when it gets pretty cool out. Um, so that's always fun. Uh, the thing about these, which I uh, have kind of learned, you know, I've always wanted to plant them all the same. I've really enjoyed having them different because there's a lot of interest going on. But when they start looking a little bit less than prime, um, I almost think that if you had them all the same, you almost you visually, if they start going out of flower, you almost lump them all together in one and you don't notice individually how they're looking. I don't know if that makes sense. Like that probably was just a huge ramble that didn't make any sense. But anyway, who knows what direction we'll take it next year. We may do the same kind of competition. I will say because we had quite a few messages asking us who won. Uh, when we posted update pictures, we did have you guys say your top three and the two top ones were my the top, I think number one was the, my red one on the very end. And number two was Aaron's that had the orange rock nofofia with the warm color. So, I mean, overwhelmingly the warm colored arrangements were voted on the most. So I thought that was really interesting. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.